Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slatter. Hello and welcome to another Fall of the Republic video. And for those of you who don't know, Fall of the Republic is the brand new upcoming Clone Wars mod for Empire at War by the team that brought us Thrawn's Revenge, which is personally my favorite Empire at War mod. Thrawn's Revenge is run by my good friend Cory, who also runs TapCap Transmissions, and both this mod and Thrawn's Revenge are now under the Empire at War Expanded banner, which is pretty cool. So keep in mind though, with all that being said, that today's content is actually from a beta version of the mod, an early beta version, so there may be some bugs, notably there will be some ships missing that will be on the final roster, but still, I thought this would be a fun video to make, especially for those of you who are new to the mod. If you want to see more, you can also check out the pretty much complete CIS playthrough I did, but with that being said, let's get right into the content, and today we'll be counting down the five strongest ships currently in the mod. And to illustrate how these ships work and how powerful they are, we will be using the in-game fleet builder. And to access that, because some of you have been asking, you go just from the main menu, go to single player, galactic conquest, instant action slash fleet builder. You have to select the confederate, or sorry, the republic. Um, the difficulty doesn't matter here. Just set it to Admiral, it doesn't matter. Mission Start the game, updated. and then click Begin. Um, in this screen, you now see this map, and if you look closely, uh, there are two little waypoints, I guess you'd call them. One for the Confederacy, uh, this one, and one for the Republic. You basically just spawn the ships you want, and you click the uh, action button, the battle cam button, and they can fight it out, and you control the Republic ships. This is still fairly early, so there are some issues with how ships control and whatnot, but I think it will well serve today's video. With that being said, let's take a look at the fifth most powerful ship. Alright guys, so at number five we have the Bulwark Mark II class battlecruiser, and as I alluded to earlier, there are some issues with the ships retreating, um, especially if there is an imbalance in power but we can still see them go into action against a fairly sizable Republic task force here. Um, the Bulwark Mark II is, from what I understand, based off a ship that first appeared in Star Wars Rebellion, which is an older PC game. Um, it's basically a blunt weapon. Not like a Star Destroyer because it's not that precise even, but a lot of shields, a lot of armor, and some really decent firepower, mostly turbo laser batteries. I don't think it has any laser cannons, so you'll definitely want to be supporting this ship wherever you go um, with some corvettes and probably some carriers. As you can see, it does have some uh, fighters here, but compared to this little battle group, not a whole lot. Um, so yeah, you always want to be protecting big ships like this um, with, you know, support ships. Let's just see if we can skip ahead and have the two fleets battled out so we can see the firepower and the durability here. I'll put fast speed on. And the first bulwark is almost in range. Or sorry, first bulwark mark two. Um, interestingly enough, there's a bit of weird lore around the bulwark. I did a whole video on the vessel. Um, the Alliance has one of these ships, or at least one of the bulwarks in the game that I mentioned earlier. I don't think anyone's really clear what model it is. Um, the whole ship line as itself is mostly a creation of the Essential Guide to Warfare. Um, so, just a little bit of interesting uh, knowledge there. Hopefully we, since we can see these things actually engage. If not, you'll just have to take my word for it. Um, very unique design though, certainly among the CIS ships. You don't see I guess with some exceptions, you don't really see these large bulking cruisers very often in the Clone Wars. Um, so, we are going to see one of their main limitations here. They're going to get ravaged by these fighters. Um, but hopefully, they'll put some fire in. Uh, if not, you guys will just have to take my word for it. Yeah, so, he's attacking this Acclimator. You can see he's getting through the shields pretty well. Uh, but even this thing is being absolutely swarmed by fighters, and you know what? It's doing a reasonable job at not dying immediately. I probably should not have made this task force so large, but that's fine. Live and learn. But yeah, you can see, putting out pretty decent firepower. He's uh, only really targeting one enemy at a time, though, which I think is pretty notable. Uh, but he's doing a decent job. Again, nothing flashy here. 
and I think there's a pretty big gap between this ship and the next one. So with that being said, let's move on. Alright guys, so next up we have the Tektor class Star Destroyer. And there were actually a few positions where I could have inserted Imperial Star Destroyers, including even the Secutor on this list, but I didn't want the video to be dominated by the Republic, and there's really a lot of similarities here. The game has, especially for late Republic ships, the Tector, which is what we're looking at right here, as well as the ISD-1, albeit called the Imperator. Oh, let's click action. Um, so the Tector just has a really, really overwhelming amount of firepower. Uh, way, way more than what we see with uh, basically any of the ships that come below it on this list. And in certain situations, it can even match the vessels above it. Um, one of the main weaknesses, of course, relates to fighters. Um, I made a little battle group for it to go against, and because it's got a couple of providences, um, you know, it, it is fairly fighter heavy, but once this ship gets in range, we'll see the pure destructive power, especially when compared to its Clone Wars contemporaries. But, as we're seeing, um, you want to support big ships like this, um, big big for the air anyway, with uh, corvettes, just like we talked about before, uh, probably some carriers. The Tector especially um, gives up all, I think, all laser cannons um, for turbo lasers, and, as I'll show you guys on the bottom here, has no lower hangar bay. Um, it's a pure, basically, battleship. Roger that. Unlike the Imperator, which still is less carrier-focused than the Venator, um, but maintains the maintains at least some hangar. Let's go ahead and move you up. And the Star Destroyer should soon be in, be in range, and this Providence is going to be absolutely shredded. I mean, the range is good. Uh, this forward firing arc is good. It will be. It could even engage this one from this position too. Um, but yeah, like a single volley basically takes that shield all the way down. I'll let the victory and the acclimator keep on this one, and we'll show what kind of firepower this thing has here. I mean, the Providence isn't a particularly sturdy vessel, but I think it's representative of what both factions were um, typically sporting during the war. And this thing just goes right through them, no problem. Just devastating. There's no real match for the um, ISD. We'll talk about the next ship is a CIS one, and arguably that's a match, but it wouldn't. It would have been far rarer um, than the ISD. So let's just watch it broadside this uh, Providence and just crush it. I mean, the Imperial Star Destroyer could compete with New Republic ships. It was relevant throughout history. That includes the Tector. Um, so it's no surprise that it's so successful here. Um, I probably could have slotted in the ISD-1 or the Secutor. So just keep that in mind as well. Taking a screenshot, sorry. I like the look of that. And I got my screenshot key finally working. Uh, but yeah, also far, far more durable than the Venator. So, let's move on. Alrighty, so next up, we have... Alrighty, so next up, we're returning to the CIS, um, and we are building a Dreadnought version of the Providence. Um, as you guys may or may not know, the Providence comes in two sizes, the regular carrier slash cruiser size, which this is not, this is the Dreadnought size. Uh, and you can tell that the Dreadnought is much, much larger, um, and is, you know considerably more powerful as well. So let's go ahead and put this against a Tector and a Venator and see what happens. 
We just saw how the Tector um, mauled the, uh, a <laughs> little bit of a pun there, mauled the Providence in the last battle, so let's see what happens here. Trying to run, which is annoying. That's one of the little issues that this uh, mod currently has. But uh, one thing that's really remarkable is the sheer amount of fighters that this produces. The majority of these fighters came from the Dreadnought variant. Um, so, like, that makes it... Not only, and I tested it before the battle, not only can the Dreadnought actually stand up to a Star Destroyer in a one-on-one -on -one battle, but, like, just based on pure firepower, what we can see what these bombers are doing to this fleet. Um, so it's a much more flexible vessel, but does come with the associated extra cost. It's 22 uh, credits, or sorry, 22 um, population cap instead of 16, I think, or 12. Uh, yeah, 12, obviously. Um, so yeah, different beasts entirely. Um, the Dreadnought's not quite as practical, uh, as a, I, don't, I think, as a mainline ship as the ISD or the Tector. But now that they're in closer range, let's see how this works. Go after the stragglers. So yeah, the shields of that is already through. I will say, probably because of the contributions of the Venator, um, the Dreadnought's falling faster than it did in my prior simulations. <laughs> Just like the simulations, but, um, yeah, that's can probably be ascribed to the Venator's presence. If they're just gunning with each other, um, the Dreadnought should win, but because the ISD has so many hard points, and the, uh, the Venator helped take this thing's shields down, it might be closer, um, but, especially with, uh, in, uh, a human-controlled fighters and whatnot taking out tactical hard points, it's a pretty easy victory. Speaking of... I think generally the... Uh, I don't know if they're the same cost, but usually in my experience the Venator can quite handily take out the Providence. But yeah, this will be a win for the uh, Dreadnought. Interestingly, the most famous Providence, um, the Invisible Hand, used by Grievous, is not the Dreadnought variant, it's just a normal cruiser. A trench, however, does have a Dreadnought. So. You guys get the idea, let's move on. Alright guys, so I thought it would be fun for us to test out the most powerful ship by putting them head-to-head, -head, at least number one and number two. Um, there will be more ships that will fight for this position, specifically I'm thinking of the Mandator. Dreadnought will most likely be number one, but right now the Confederacy of Independent Systems has the Subjugator class, and the Republic has the Praetor class battlecruiser. Um, I anticipate the Subjugator takes this pretty easy, especially with the ion cannons, and it's just better armed. This is at 32 points. This is at 36, so it's pretty close, actually. Um, so I'm curious to see... Oops. I'm curious to see which of these ships actually takes it. Because, yeah, I've never done this battle before. Um, the Subjugator has the advantage not only of the heavy weapon, uh, but more guns generally across the ship's hull. Um, I suspect... Well, I would have thought it has more fighters, but I guess not. Um, the AI feels pretty confident. It's not running, so... Let's go ahead and micromanage our fighters. Um, I'll have the... Interceptors. Go ahead and intercept. We'll have the bombers just kind of stay in reserve for now. This is a pure matchup, though. Neither of these ships right now obviously have any support ships. Um... Because they operate in the same role, so it's not really needed. Um, and send that Y-Wing in. One, two, three, four. So they each have the same amount of fighters. That's good. Four squadrons. Um, they have two bombers. I guess technically the Ark is a bomber as well. So um, These are double squadrons, though, I believe. Um, the way it works is I think these... Vulture droids actually have twice as many starfighters. Ah, whatever. 
Not worried. I would imagine they're trying to target my... Ultimately, one squadron of bombers. I mean, it makes some difference, but it's not enough to do any real damage to the shields here. Um, but that is obviously the main weak point of both of these ships. You want to... Like, you want to have a carrier-focused fleet, regardless of which one you're facing. Um, large ships are extra vulnerable to missiles, um, whether shot from capital ships or fighters. So you want to swarm them with Y-wings or, or uh, if you're fighting the Subjugator, or Vulture Droids, uh, if you're fighting the Praetor. And they are just about in range. We've taken a bit more damage, but not enough for it to really be relevant. Uh, I will say we are actually... Yeah, there we go. It looks like we outrange them for a minute there. I'm just going to bring them nose to nose and just let them... So here's the super weapon firing. And this could easily be the game changer. Let's see what it does to our shield. Uh, not that much, actually. It looks like the uh, Praetor may have more conventional weaponry. Um, or it could just be the position that we're in right now. Uh, maybe more of our guns can fire. And we are, interestingly though, we are completely immobilized right now because of that ion cannon. So that is not a, fe that's not a feature you can ignore. Um, right now, if, well, the subjugator on its own does appear to be pulling away, but even if it were not, um, because this ship is completely out of commission, you could just move it in right here. Um, and probably keep laying on it with that ion cannon, which will make the subjugator pretty hard to beat in, you know, single combat, especially head to head, head to head like this. Um, you know, bring a, a fleet of venators and you're golden, but yeah, this isn't looking good for us, and we're still actually disabled. We can't. Yeah, we can turn, <laughs> and here's another one coming, or two more coming. That'll probably take our shields all the way down, or close to it. Interestingly, in other mods that feature this ship, the, uh, yeah, we're not, oh yeah, we're not even close. Other mods that feature this ship have the ion cannon be a super weapon or a special feature, but in this it's just kind of fired by the AI, which is an interesting idea. You can actually have a maximum, I think Corey said of five subjugators at once. Um, the Malevolence, while the most famous of this ship class, was not the only one. Uh, there was the Malevolence 2, I think one was called. Uh, there were other ships, some which were designed just like this, but others which were slightly different. But yeah, this is over. Uh, we've got through the shield. Once you get through the shields of your enemy capital ship, the the uh, difference in health usually just spirals out of control because you start taking out their weapons, and they're only taking out your shield, so they're becoming less effective. Um, then at that point, it starts to snowball a little bit. And I imagine before long, our shields will be returning, if they're, they already are, actually. So, let's go ahead and just to be funny, uh, where's the spawn point? I lost it. Oh, here it is. Just call, just call a few more in. So we've got the Rekizen Dreadnought, which we didn't see. That's ugly. They jump in on top of each other. Um, basically, a larger version of the uh, Rekizen, as the Providence is a larger version of the Providence. Um... Just calling, just calling everything. <laughs> We've also got a uh, Bulwark Mark One. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. Well, you hold that you held that well, Mr. Providence, but or sorry, uh, Mr. Praetor, but it was not meant to be. Um, interestingly, the Praetor One has no official cannon design. Um, we see the Praetor Mark II in the Essential Guide to Warfare and in comics, uh, well, specifically one uh, comic, but um, we never see the predecessor. Um, this is basically the same, maybe smaller, I guess, uh, which makes sense. It looks a little sharper to me, but that might just be because of the Republic paint, which you obviously don't see on the Imperial Praetor. But with that, guys, we have our five most uh, powerful ships as it exists. 
in the current version of Fall of the Republic. And just to summarize again, that's the Subjugator class Heavy Cruiser, the Praetor Mark I, the uh, Providence Dreadnought, the Tector Star Destroyer, and finally the Bulwark Mark II. Although you could really slot a lot of ships into that fifth spot. Um, probably a better option would be the Secutor. Um, it's a pretty efficient carrier. It's basically like an upsized Venator. Um, not the Invincible. Uh, arguably the Victory, but I don't think a Victory could take on. Uh, maybe that's more testing. Anyway, lots of options. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, what's your list go from 5 to 1? Uh, what did I miss? What's your favorite ship we talked about? And what would you rather command? A Subjugator class heavy cruiser or a Praetor Mark II? And how would you support these uh, super ships? Let me know all of that and more down in the comments. Anyway guys, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. If you enjoy, please subscribe, turn notifications on so you don't miss my live streams, and leave a like. Until next time, have a great day. May the Force be with you.